Canaloplasty combined with cataract surgery can be extremely beneficial to glaucoma patients with cataracts. Following temporal clear cornea cataract surgery in this patient, a pyridomy was performed superiorly. A 4 mm 1 half thickness rectangular scleral flap is then fashioned entering nearly 2 mm into clear cornea. In this case, a 57 beaver blade was utilized. For adequate visualization, light cautery may be necessary to achieve hemostasis. After decompressing the anterior chamber to prevent ocular perforation, a second scleral flap is then fashioned beneath the first scleral flap, entering directly into Schlem's canal. The plane of this scleral flap is just anterior to the choroid. A greasehopper mini spoon may be helpful in lysing the attachments of Schlem's canal and Decimae's membrane. Once in the proper plane, Schlem's canal opens nicely and Decimae's membrane is easily exposed. As you can see, in this case, a nice trabeculodecimase window is present. The eye tract catheter is then inserted into Schlem's canal and threaded around for 360 degrees. The light beacon allows us to track the path of the catheter. A tenoproline suture is then tied to the catheter and the catheter is used as a guide wire to place the suture within the entire length of Schlem's canal. At the same time as suture placement, Elon GV is injected to dilate the canal. Using slip knots, the tension of the two sutures are adjusted to ensure adequate flow through the trabecular meshwork into Schlem's canal and the collector channels. The size of the trabeculodecimase window and the suture tension are believed to be important prognostic factors in determining good canaloplasty outcomes. The scleral flap is then placed within its bed and the conjunctiva closed with two adovipral wing sutures. Suture placement in the scleral flap is recommended if perforations of the trabeculodecimae window are encountered. With experience, I believe that the difficulty and duration of canaloplasty is comparable to that of trabeculectomy.